Check, 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 one, check, one. Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Outdoors. Thank you so much for tuning in today. This is a 2002 Polaris Magnum 500, and I use this to plow snow up here in the mountains. So what you can expect in this video today is, I'm gonna review this old junky Polaris quad that has actually been extremely reliable for the past 20 years plowing snow. And I'm also gonna talk about some of the pros and cons to consider if you're considering using an ATV or a quad for snow plowing. All right, now to give you a sense of sort of what I'm dealing with here, I live in California, but I live in the mountains of California. And a lot of people don't realize this, but in the mountains of California, we actually get quite a bit of rain and snow because all the storms come right off the Pacific Ocean. So in my location here in Southern California in the San Jacinto Mountains, I would say we average maybe five feet of snow a year, four to five feet. Some years it could be double that, some years you might only get a foot or two of snow, but it's a lot of snow to remove. And we also get that very heavy, wet kind of cement snow that can be really annoying to remove. Now let me give you a sense of kind of my property and what I'm dealing with in terms of the snow removal situation. So the reason we bought this property, one of the main reasons, you can see it has an unbelievable view. One of the best views you could ever imagine having with a house. Now the downside to that is that we are on the top of a mountain. We are on a very steep driveway, a private unmaintained road. It's very difficult to access this property. But of course we love the views, it's great. And most of the year when we don't have snow, it's even nicer. Uh, we're at 6,100 feet above sea level. Now let me kind of show you. So I've got this big cement kind of circular driveway here. This is here because there used to be a tree here uh, which was just in the way dealing with trailers and motorcycles and trucks and backing things in. So we ended up removing the tree there and plugging that with cement, which makes my life a lot easier. So I've got to clear all this. And then, hi squirrel, you can see this is the road that we live on. So this road is a one lane road. It is not a maintained road. So it sucks because on the one hand, we're not able to close it off. It's not considered really a private road that we can close off to people, but the county doesn't maintain it, so we have to repair the pavement, pay for the paving, do any maintenance like that, put in gutters, whatever, and I have to remove snow. So this goes down to a state highway down there, about uh, 500 feet down that way, and this road continues up the hill, and we'll take a ride on the quad up here in a minute. This continues up the hill for maybe another couple thousand feet. So it's a long private road, and it's also uneven and off camber and very, very steep. There's parts of this road that are about a 20% gradient, which is way, way too steep for a road to be driving on, especially in the winter. So that kind of gives you some sense of what I'm dealing with in terms of snow removal. So let's cover, let's go back to the quad and kind of cover the quad review first. And we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of uh, snow plowing with a quad. And then of course, we'll take you on a ride as well. So here's the Polaris quad. Now the story behind this quad is that the people who we bought this house from, the, the nicest people ever, actually, we ended up becoming friends with them. I ended up buying this from them. They had bought this when they built this house in 2000, around 2004, 2005, to remove snow. So they had this, uh, the gentleman bought this new, and then I bought it from him in around 2000. 15, I think maybe the year after we bought this house, I ended up deciding to get it from them. And so this is a 2002 model year. There's not much information about this quad because it's kind of a unique model. So it's technically kind of a Magnum 500. So it's a single cylinder liquid cooled engine. It's about 500 cc. The horsepower, it doesn't have any horsepower. I don't know how much, not much, you know, honestly, especially after all these years of neglect. Um, the reason it says professional series is the professional series, they only did this for a year or two. And what they did was they lowered the gearing for like, it's made for like industrial work or moving equipment around like um, warehouses and stuff, kind of strange, right? It's not, it only has a top speed of about 20 or 25 miles an hour. It's geared super, super low, which is very good for moving snow and doing things like that. It also has like heavier duty alternator and things like that just to make it better for uh, more of a more industrial use. So it's kind of the perfect snow plowing quad, but it is getting very old and tired and I'm considering maybe getting something new to replace it. Now, let me give you a tour around the quad, kind of show you all of its interesting features. So uh, a few years ago, one of the best things I ever did was put on these Tusk Mud Force tires. Now I did have to pay for these. Um, I, I, I didn't get sponsored by Tusk back, back in the day when I got these tires, although I work with Rocky Mountain now. I love Rocky Mountain ATV. If you're shopping for ATV stuff, I think they're the best out there if you're in the USA. So these are the Mud Force tires. They have incredible, incredible grip in snow and mud and one of the best changes I've ever done to this quad. 
So the, the Polaris quads, the thing I really love about Polaris is their, their all-wheel drive system, it's, it's like having a limited slip in a front and back. So there's power to both the front and rear axles, but if you get slip on one wheel, it locks the axle automatically. So as I'm plowing the snow, as I'm moving the snow, I don't have to select a switch to turn the lockers on and off or do any of that. It just all does it on its own. And it has pretty incredible traction. Really, I, I have a lot of experience with four-wheel drive vehicles. I own a Jeep. Uh, this thing's pretty amazing with how the differentials work. And I'd probably buy another Polaris quad just because of that feature. So kind of walking around showing you, um, it does have, you know, the utility racks front and back. I put on a, a LED light on the back that's lit up so I can see behind me when I'm plowing. Uh, let's see what else. It does have like a tow hitch if you wanted to tow something. Looking underneath, it's very simple. You have a mono shock in the rear. Very simple design for this quad, very utilitarian. You can see here it says shaft ride system, kind of a weird name. Um, automatic dual sensing engine braking system. What it does is it slows the engine down going downhill to give you engine braking. It actually works really well. There's the uh, drive belt under here. Coolant and oil stuff is in there. Oil filter. I do change oil every year. Uh, fuel valve there to turn it off and on to go to reserve. Fuel tank. It holds like, I don't know, I think maybe three gallons of fuel and you can go pretty far plowing snow with that. You've got a uh, choke lever here for starting. It is a carbureted quad. It's not like a newer fuel injected one on off switch. The dashboard and the gauges, this stuff stopped working years and years ago. This whole thing is really like beat up and kind of messed up. It's been cracked and broken. It, this quad's had a hard life living outside and doing this. So that's broken. And here I've got my winch controller. I'll talk about the winch. I've got heated grips from Tusk, the ATV heated grips. One of the best things I did because then my hands stay warmer when I'm plowing. Got the parking brake kind of thing here, which is plastic. I'm always worried about that braking, but it never seems to break. Power outlet, which doesn't work anymore. Now you can see, I put on these LED headlights. These are Amazon. They're like, uh, you know, Nylite or whatever the $20 ones are. Super easy to wire in, cheap. I wired them to the low beam switch. And so you've got the factory light there, which doesn't do you much good. It's a weak halogen unit and the LEDs provide pretty good light. So let's look at the plow setup. So this has the factory, you know, uh, Polaris branded worn winch. So I don't know the capacity rating of it, but this thing is old. It's been on here probably since the quad was new. So almost 20 years. And this winch lifts the plow. So you've got a wire here. I wish it was synthetic rope like the newer winches. And then it connects to the plow system. So this is a worn plow system. And I had to go to, I had to use a universal mount to mount it to the bottom of the ATV. They don't make an ATV, they don't make a, a bike specific kit for this ATV because it's so old. And then to, this is a, I believe it's a 50 inch wide blade. It is a worn, you just, it's worn off. Get it worn, worn off. Uh, and then I like to use these plastic uh, plow blades here. I just think they're quieter. They wear and they don't wear the asphalt and the concrete as much. So I like the plastic ones, but you can flip them over, which I have done. And I get about a year out of each side. So every two years I've got to replace it. To change the angle of the plow blade, right? Because you're always doing that. You do have to get off the bike, come to the front. You have to push this lever forward. And then I'm doing this with my leg, but then you can, you know, change your angle and it'll lock in there like that. All right, uh, just for fun, let's take a quick ride on the quad, kind of show you how it works. So you can see all my controls here. So my winch control is here, so I don't have to move my hand too far off the bar. How this works, let me turn the ignition on. Um, you see, if I move the winch out, plow goes down. If I bring the winch in, plow goes up right there. So pretty easy to use, right? The one thing you can't do is you can't change the angle of the plow from here. You'd have to have like a hydraulic system that gets very expensive and complicated, although it would be really nice to have if you were doing this a lot. So to fire up the quad, give a little bit of choke. I do wish it was fuel injected. It'd be nice to have a newer fuel injected model. Make sure the, so the shifters here, we shouldn't have the parking brake on the shifters here. So the light, kind of the shift lights are not really working anymore. Um, you've got forward, park, park lights up. You've got reverse, reverse lights up, and neutral and forward don't really light up. So anyway, start the quad. Now I'm kind of doing this one-handed. I don't ever recommend driving an ATV with one hand, obviously, but I'm filming on the fly. That's just what we're gonna do. So it's a little bit cold-blooded. Maybe it wants a little bit more choke. Now, like I said before, this quad is not fast. It's designed for slow speeds and heavy hauling.
So you see when I let off the throttle like that, it comes to a stop on its own. That's the engine braking kicking in. So this quad's really good at, at steep grades and things like that. It's because it's that professional model, not amateur model, professional. So now we're back up to the part of the road that is actually plowed and maintained by the county. So right back there is the cutoff. So that's where that maintenance, maintenance on the road stops. That steep part we came up is my responsibility to keep cleared because my neighbors don't do it. They may be listening, so I have to talk quietly. So let's go back to the house and uh, continue on this review. Now, one other feature that I forgot to mention that I really appreciate about this, and I don't think a lot of modern uh, quads or bikes have this, is it has a pull start. So sometimes what happens in the dead of winter is cold, it's wet, right? Your battery can run down or get low and you're winching. So you can have a pull start. So let's see how this works. I've been able to pull start this bike quite a few times. Now I do have a lithium battery in this bike now, which helps a lot. And I recommend having a really strong battery, especially when you're doing a lot of winching. Now let's cover the reliability. Has this thing been reliable over the past 20 some years? There's a few issues with it, nothing too major. Um, one is that the it used to have an issue with the charging system. They had uh, faulty voltage regulators, I think it's called, or rectifiers maybe. And so it wouldn't charge, it wouldn't give enough voltage. So I replaced that. That was like a hundred bucks or something. That wasn't too hard to fix. The rear brake, you can see it just goes to the ground, to the floorboard. I can never keep the rear brake working on this bike. So it has a front brake, which is linked to the back, and then it has a rear brake, but I've just found that it doesn't really matter. I just use the hand brake, which is the front brake, and that's good enough for me. The engine braking is so good on this bike anyway. So something to do with the seals and a rear brake system, I don't know what it is. I have you know, pumped it up and uh, uh, bled it before, but it just, I can't get it to, to stay working. Other than that, it's pretty simple. I've done oil changes. I've changed the transmission fluid, the, the drive, you know, other fluids, coolant, stuff like that. The drive belt is still in really good condition. I do have a spare. Um, again, I talked about changing the tires out, which was kind of expensive, but really it's never let me down. It's never not been able to plow snow. I've actually hit stuff so hard plowing, like I've hit trees or manzanita bushes and um, stuff I don't want to even talk about. Maybe my wife's car. Hopefully she's not watching this video. Uh, she didn't see that one happen. I've hit stuff so hard that I've actually like broken the mount for the plow and I've had to replace it before. So this thing has been through hell and really it's held up really, really well. And I'm, I'm having a hard time justifying buying a new one just because it just, it just does the job, even though it's kind of old and crappy and kind of run down. All right, now let's sit down and talk about some of the pros and cons of plowing with an ATV if you're considering doing a setup like this. So I think the biggest pro is if you already have an ATV, you might as well use it for snow plowing if you live in an area with snow. A plow setup, you know, could run anywhere between 500 to 1,000, maybe on high end $1,500. If you've already spent five, 10 grand or whatever it is on an ATV, you might as well do that. But if you don't have an ATV and you're looking at snow removal, it's gonna be more cost effective either maybe to get a plow for your truck or to get a plow for, um, you know, or to just use a snow blower or something like that. What are some other big advantages to plowing with an ATV? So the huge thing for me and the real reason why I do this is because for the tight road, the tight driveway that you saw, tight spaces, maneuvering around trees and vehicles, making tight turns, working in tight quarters, this is so much smaller, more maneuverable and lighter and easier to get around with than a truck or a Jeep or something like that. And if I crash it and damage it, I'm only damaging a 20 year old junkie ATV and not, you know, my Jeep, which is like $30,000 to replace. Some other pros to this, um, it's fun, right? You're riding a bike. It's fun to do. Uh, it's pretty fast to plow snow as long as the snow's not too deep. So that brings me to the downsides of using an ATV for snow plowing. Now, this might seem obvious, but you're exposed to the elements. You're out on a bike. It's not an enclosed vehicle, or if maybe if you have a side-by-side -side with a windshield, it's not like that. So if you need to remove snow while the snow or rain or sleet is still coming down, you're gonna be wet, cold, and miserable, and it's not something that I really recommend. Another con to using an ATV is that you're only plowing a much narrower area. So, you know, 50, 55, 60 inches, whatever your blade you get, that's obviously a lot less area of plowing than uh, you would have with a truck mounted plow or tractor or something like that. The other downside is, and it's a big one, is that this is, you know, a five or 600 pound quad with maybe 25 horsepower. There's a limit to how much snow you can physically push. It's just a physics 
thing, right? So the snow gets really heavy. If you have five or six inches of heavy wet snow, or even six inches of powder snow, this thing starts to struggle, especially on uh, going uphill and things like that. Um, and <laughs> so really it's good for light to moderate snowfalls, but he really heavy snowfalls, this simply doesn't work. And I've gotten it stuck plenty of times and had to winch it out with my Jeep, winch it out of a snowbank and go, go to use the uh, track drive snowblower, which I also have. So just keep in mind how much snow you're gonna get. Uh, if you regularly get like snow between like two to six inches, maybe eight inches on a good day. If you have light snow, it could work, but heavier than that, no, you're gonna need heavier duty equipment. Another downside to this is, like I mentioned before, it's expensive. So unless you already have an ATV, it's kind of a big investment to do uh, a setup like this. And you might be better off just going with a heavy duty snow blower or getting a plow for your truck or something like that. So I sincerely hope this has been useful. I hope I've kind of covered the pros and cons here, giving you some insight into this old girl, this old beast of a quad, which has been really a pretty amazing and reliable unit for me for all these years that that uh, that this thing has been going. So I hope this has been useful. Again, comments, questions, put them down below if you have questions about this setup and if you're looking to do something like this. Otherwise, support your channel. There's ways to do that in the description below. Check out my motorcycle channel as well, Big Rock Moto. Otherwise, uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching and be safe out there.